Hello, it's Darren from Fleet MPS, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview of Kofax Power PDF. Uh, Power PDF is the number one alternative to Adobe Pro DC, uh, globally that is. Uh, it's also the number one for the legal sector. Something that we hear really commonly from our clients is that they've only got, say, a few licenses of Adobe Pro, and that's purely because they can't warrant the cost of giving it to the whole business. Um, so what tends to happen is they'll get a few in, and they sometimes even share those licenses around individuals. Uh, with volume and licensing of Power PDF from ourselves, we can make it so much more cost-effective that you can look to try and provide this to all of the people in the business, um, certainly the ones that need it, if not the whole company. As you can see, it's got a very familiar and intuitive user interface, um, very much mimicking that of, say, Word or PowerPoint. Um, and if there's any tools that we can't find across this ribbon up the top here, we've got a little search tool over here. So we can just type into there and find what we want to find. Other parts of the interface are very similar to Adobe. Um, so we've got the bookmarks tab over here. I uh, can quickly create some bookmarks. Uh, there we go, number one. I'll do a little sub bookmark as well, which I can put underneath that first one, like so. And then we've got our pages tab, and we can manipulate pages, moving them around or right clicking and deleting them if we want to. We've got a document signing panel over here, and then we've got other tabs such as your, uh, your comments and your attachments. So, um, Power PDF uses the OmniPage OCR engine, which is really powerful. Uh, so I'm just going to OCR this. We can see it's de-skewed that document, and it's found a word there it's not sure of because there's a crease in the in the bit of paper. So we're just going to correct that. Okay. Right, that document is now converted and should be editable. So that text, which was once a scan, should now be selectable. So I've opened that converted document in just normal Adobe Reader, just to show the compatibility. Um, and as you can see, I can select all of the text in it. Um, or I can just select the bit I want to select, just for the purpose of this example. Copy it, and then paste it. And we can see it's pulled that across quite well. We've got all the figures in there, all the names. Okay, so let's just try pulling out just one number down there, something more important, the total value. Perfect. So that shows us a really good example of a scan file, but now I'm going to have a look at a document which was once made in PowerPoint uh, and has been converted to PDF. So I've got some different options here. I can convert to different formats. Uh, I'm going to convert this document to PowerPoint, so effectively convert it back to what it was. Uh, I'll just save that and it will automatically open it for us in PowerPoint. And there we go. And we can see we can edit the text separately from the images. There we go, new title. Yeah, more text down there. All of the text here is all separate, separated. It's worked out the bullet points. I can edit this one if I want to. Yeah, overall looks a very good conversion. Even these funny, funny characters here, it's worked out well. So looking at something a bit more common, here's a document that first started out as a Word file and has been converted to PDF. I could convert back to Word if I wanted to, but I don't need to because I can simply edit it on the fly. So I can select text here and just start typing. Select some text here. I'm going to make that bold. Select something down here. Let's make it red. There we go. Um, down this section here, perhaps we want to remove this whole lump, so let's just get rid of that section of text. I can see down here that I've got a credit card number, so what I'm going to do is redact that information from the document. So search and redact, yeah. Uh, we are going to uh, look for credit card numbers. Search. Oh, there's actually two in the document, there we go. So let's select them both, we'll mark them for redaction. That's it. So there's the first one. Where's the second? It's not up there. Uh, there it is down there. So once we apply that redaction, they will be blacked out and be completely gone from the document. Um, I can also edit objects. So this pie chart down here, I can literally explode that. Uh, so you can see all the individual pieces of the pie chart I can move around. This image, I could move that or change the size of it if I wanted to. Next thing I want to do is some markups. So if we select comments and then highlights, and we're just going to highlight this yellow. There we go. And let's uh, add a text box like so. We can type in there. And a call out, these are quite good. So we'll pop that on this chart here. Uh, 
We can customize headers and footers as well. So we could add page numbers, dates, whatever else we want to add into there. And uh, we can use these simple macros for that. So, or we can just free type. And there we can see it's applied them. We've also got lots of connectors available in Power PDF, so we can connect with your backend systems. Um, could be something really complex, or it could be as simple as just scan, uh, saving into OneDrive or reading from OneDrive. So I'm just going to finish off now with combining documents and splitting documents as well. Um, so I've got a selection of documents here that I want to combine. So we'll just save that as test. So once that's complete, we can see all of those documents in this one PDF file. And if we go to the bookmarks, we can see that it's made a bookmark for each document. And it's also worked out the bookmarks for those Word documents. So it's figured out the headings in those to make bookmarks. And the slides in the PowerPoint, we can see it's given bookmarks to those as well. So the final thing to show then would just be to split those documents. Um, so say we've done a scan, we could have put a blank sheet between each separate document and we could tell it to split at that blank sheet. Or it might be that we set a criteria of a certain word that it looks for to do the split. Or maybe we even say every three pages split the document into a separate PDF file. So if I was to summarise Power PDF and why it's a better alternative to Adobe Pro DC, um, firstly, PDF is an ISO standard, so there is no reason that you need to feel tied into Adobe. Um, other editors can edit it just as well. It's not going to cause any issues. Uh, the user interface is really simple. Obviously, it's got that ribbon interface like a Microsoft product, so instantly your users know how to use it. Um, it's got a more powerful feature set in it. You've got better file conversions, as we saw, um, really retained the, the conversion of that, that PowerPoint file that we saw really well. Uh, we've got the OmniPage OCR engine, which gives you that brilliant um, conversion of, say, scanned documents where the text uh, is just an image, effectively. Um, and there's obviously the big financial benefit. So rather than having to give a, you know, a set amount of licenses to some users, you can probably provide Power PDF to your whole business potentially. Um, you've also got connectivity into your back-end systems and cloud repositories. And uh, one thing I didn't mention was um, you can collaborate on PDF files with other users on your network. So if you'd like to take the next steps, then please get in contact with us, um, either through our website or on the phone. Uh, we're always happy to provide a trial of the product so that you can uh, see the benefits before actually making a commitment. Um, finally, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if it's been helpful, then take a look at the insights on our website as there's loads of other ones on there uh, which will give you sort of information on how we can help you improve your print and document workflows.